Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Scatia. Good morning, students. Good morning, Dr. Walter Cooper. Walter Cooper, or Dr. Walter, no, as some students refer yeah. to him. You mean your reading challenge? Is a man of many hats at School 10 in the Rochester City School District. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 86. I'm 86. He's the go-to for learning yeah, about eyewitness accounts of history. Uh, Our teacher, Ms. Barrett, told you that you were in the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the march, uh, not the Selma. The march on Washington, yes, I went there, yeah. It was more like a spiritual march. You had the world's population represented. You had He's also a motivator. What do you want to do career-wise? What do you want to be? I'm a pediatrician. Pediatrician? I'm a hairstylist or a dance teacher. Hairstylist. Okay, be a good one, because there's a lots of competition there. A challenger. Why are you interested in being a gamer? Pardon me, speak up loud. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm your friend. Because I'm good at it. I'm your friend. Shake my hand. What is it? Because I'm good at it. You're good at it, okay. You'll be better at it if you, were, if you could read well. Right. <laughs> and a grandfather. He also happens to be the namesake of the school. In 2010, the building was named Dr. Walter Cooper Academy. The former research scientist at Kodak and longtime education advocate in Rochester says it's an honor that hits close to home. My uh, family uh, actually uh, came out of the Depression and we moved to evolve to another higher plane economically and knowledge-wise, all because of education. This is where your dollars come from, right here. We had no money, but uh, uh, we had the drive and the interest to make something out of our lives. Engaging with the Everybody students of the Dr. Walter Cooper Academy morning. is a highlight of his busy <laughs> weekly job. schedule. Okay, have a good school day. Cooper usually visits the school twice a week, stopping by classrooms. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Cooper. The nurse's office. I hope you'll feel better. A cafeteria. I want everybody to be successful. That's why I'm here. And school leadership meetings. So what are the problems in the school? He's involved in everything. He comes to all of our um, planning meetings. He's been an advocate for us um, when we needed things at central office. And so he just, he's family to us, you know, and he's just not a building namesake. Cooper's priorities are to ensure students know their worth, that they show up to school every day, and that they're all reading at grade level by the third grade the last of which requires what he calls tough medicine at times. How can you be proud of that? Because that determines your future. You can't be proud of not being able to read. People call you a dummy and everything, and you end up being dependent upon somebody else for your future. His focus on literacy is part personal, as his own father never learned how to read or write. My father didn't have a day of education. It's also a school-wide mission known as the Cooper Challenge. Are you meeting your reading challenges? The youngster has to read a book and the parent has to sign off on it. And that becomes uh, part of uh, the reading challenge. It's X number of books uh, uh, per week or per month. And so it's a, a what I would call a, a very relevant and convenient scheme to engage the parent in at least in terms of uh, overlooking the 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 young their youngsters uh, reading i wasn't actually reading until he had talked to me and then uh, it made me feel like i should actually read and i actually think it's fun to read right now i'm reading these scientific books that he has read, some of them, some of them back in his days, but I'm learning. You know, I will convey to them that uh, you'll become a modern slave if you don't learn to read, write, and comprehend, 
because you'll never have a job of value in a society that uh, uh, actually demands some kind of ec educational and therefore economic stability. And according to Walter Cooper, the work of educating children isn't successful unless it also includes the family. So this summer, the school is launching its first six-week summer learning program for parents. The agenda includes lessons on developmental needs of kids, literacy, new techniques to promote curiosity and learning, and more. I believe that the family is indeed the primary determinant of educational achievement. But if a youngster does not have family, how do you make amends or, 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 or how do you actually provide for that youngster new insights and, and new hope? The school has to be the youngster's refuge. Cooper says not much can slow him down in his work with the team at the school to continue making the Dr. Walter Cooper Academy a refuge for kids and to continue instilling in students the Cooper Code to never, never, never give up.